Hello, welcome to uh, Charlie Brooks South East um, and me, hello Stephen. Um, now I know I said there wasn't going to be an update but uh, I had a few comments on my last update uh, which were all um, greatly received. I know there was a few criticisms and, uh, and well not criticisms, not negatives. I know some people said sorry about all the negatives, they're not negatives. It, um, constructive advice I'd call it because um, I don't like to call it criticisms because you can't really criticise someone with what was said to criticise someone you'd have to say well that's completely rubbish um, and oh that's that's no good or you're really rubbish at doing model railways which I probably am but um, it's a learning curve and like I've said many many times before this is why we do these videos uh, because then if you get stuck on something you can do a video and ask um, anyone in the railway community and um, and as I said it's been said before it's a brilliant little community um, everyone likes to help everyone where they can I mean there's people out there that um, say that they're nowhere near where I am at but there you go, so um, I'm just sort of, I've got some notes that I've actually made this time so I can read off them, hopefully it's a bit better but I'm I'm going to first start with an apology to uh, Michael Hemfrey, I hope I've said that right um, when I was on about these and saying about laying the, using these and showing you using these what my layout was going to be well it was actually Michael that um, sort of commented to let me know how to get hold of them. I mean, they come like that, and a sheet of paper like that. I mean, you've got all the different ones. You've got all, all the, the points configurations that Pico do. Um, obviously, it's code 100. Um, it doesn't make a difference with this whether it's insul frog or electro frog because they're all the same points just obviously it's the frogs that are different not the sizes or how they're they're made up like the initial layout um, now if you go as Michael pointed out to me if you go to Pico or go to Google and type in Pico points templates if you want to get hold of some of these I mean probably 90% of people on here have already had them used them have got them I mean, because a lot of people we, that I'm subscribed to have actually got track laid, so it's a bit late now <laughs> for them. But um, uh, it says on there, though, uh, use this scale bar to check that your printer is printing at 100%. Well, I couldn't, I know you can on a print, on when you print out, you can say to fit page and then the percentage. I couldn't find that on these, so it's not actually the, the, um, the little scale at the bottom here. So you're going across the bottom there. It starts off okay, but as you get up to the end, it sort of goes out of sync. I don't know why, but uh, anyway, it done me to sort of just get an idea of how to do it and to put it across to you what I'm doing. So there's that. So thank, thanks again, Michael, and apologies for not mentioning you in my last update to say that oh, that's where I got them from. Um, don't try and track me down, <laughs> hunt me down, and uh, no, I'm joking. Okay, thank you. Um, anyway. So my next bit I'm going to get onto is um, something mentioned by Five Elms and Jason was um, you know across the back here I'm going to have the hill with the waterfall. Um, now there's been a few comments on that. Um, I think it is is it Matthew Stamp said about having a tram line and making it a bit urban. It's a good idea, but it's not really what what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a nice sort of because I like doing my scenery uh, as you know I've got my diorama which hasn't been touched for ages I'm going to try and get back on that as well um, but um, I like doing my scenery and I thought that would be a nice bit of scenic on now so what I'm going to do is uh, as I say excuse me a minute excuse me right sorry that was my son Charlie he's now in the loft with me um, as I said, I want to keep the waterfall section. Um, I mean, it was a great idea by Matthew, but um, 
I, I, I just think because I want to hide that back section which I'll come on to in my next bit but um, Jason at Five Elms has actually suggested I have an end to end um, raised section and that my son could control and I was thinking yeah and it could be DC rather than DCC so he just has to do the old controllers there's no um, you know it's not technical or anything you just switch it in the direction you want to go and turn the knob and the train goes backwards and forwards and then he has to um, he just has to sort of stop it at the end of each line now sorry that was Charlie again um, right so you've got as I say the end to end and I was going to have it running across the top of the cliff because as I say this light's going to go and it will be sort of more tucked out the way um, so basically hold on can I just you have to just two seconds just going to lift it up a bit so you can see now see this here this is the beam that I can't remove obviously because I don't think the landlord will be too happy when his roof caves in and I wouldn't either um, but obviously this won't be here so you'd have that bit so I'm going to have sort of I might have to do the uh, the cliff a bit lower than what I wanted sorry just get that back so you can see me <laughs> great isn't it uh, and then have the track going across with like a girder bridge or some sort of uh, bridge going across the gap where the waterfall comes down and that I think that would be another excellent bit of scenery and then you could have the trains going across the top with the waterfall coming down behind it and then there are two, these two bridges here down the bottom and then the train will go along hold on to this the train will go along past the pillar there um, I'll explain this in a minute and it will come off the end here now I know there's that light I might see I think I've got two single lights I might change that one as well for a single light I think it was a, the wrong idea to put double lights over the top of the layout but I thought it might give it some brightness but I think it's too bright actually looking at that to that I think that's better than that in brightness so um, yeah and then it will come out and then I might have like a little extension on the side there where them teak, where my teak coaches are and um, have it going over to there and then have it like an ending bit with two lines so it goes into two so you can have one train sitting there and then the other one can come back all the way along and then in that corner have a station a uh, thermos station little term only a tiny little thermos station with a line coming off so you can sort of move things about and, uh, and have like a passing line so the train can come in uncouple do -do -do -do, go around sorry i didn't mean to go do -do 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 -do, and come round, and then um hook back up the other end of the carriages and then take them all the way back across the bridge and that would be something for, for, for Charlie to sort of um, control and play with um, thank you Jason for that suggestion that's sort of really given me some food for thought there so obviously um, if anyone has anything they could suggest uh, different um, but as I say I want to keep the waterfall idea because um, you know I want to really get a nice bit of scenic uh, like you know something as I say because obviously looking over from the station and seeing that in the background gives it a nice backdrop to the station hopefully I can get that working um, and as you can probably hear I'm better with my cold now thanks um, but so there's that so yeah let me know what you think about that so <laughs> my next uh, sort of um, thing to do with the comments was uh, a lot of people were telling me the helix may be a good idea but it's a long way off or it takes up a lot of room um, get you know don't bother with it at all and um, I'm pleased to announce that the helix has gone in the bin um, I just don't think I mean if I was running from all the way down the end there where my Lego collection is and my book collection and CD collection and stuff all the way down that there, that mess, um, through that beam and then through this beam, a bit like yours, Jason, and a bit like um, um, Dave Class 47 theme park. 
Um, he's he's um, you know, and then I'd probably have a helix down that end, and then trains go underneath, back up, and then have a helix round. But that's probably not going to happen. One moment, please. Sorry, my son wanted my Nerf gun. Don't worry, it's not loaded, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to get with the helix idea. And I've been thinking, across the back here, um, taking that out over the back, and then sort of starting... I don't know if you can... Let's see if I can zoom in. don't know if you can see that line there, over here. Where's my finger? See this line here? Perhaps from there, going round, hold on, going round. So you go, oh, let me pan round. So it goes round, going all the way there, hey. all the way round, as far as it can go, round the other side of that pillar, there, and then from over there, sort of basically in line with that line, coming back this way, sorry. All the way around, round, 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 passing there, have two uh, foam riser sections. So one goes down and under the layout, and then they meet sort of under where I am now, sort of, if I just can, like under here, this is the edge of the layout here, this is where the station's going to be, under here somewhere they meet, um, and then they hold on sorry it's, oh, that's it um they sort of meet oh yeah sorry i was zoomed in wasn't i sorry they meet and then goes back up so they pass side by side over the back there so they start sort of where i said about these lines sort of here but over over a bit go all the way down round the back and then obviously because they do need quite a bit because I was speaking to um, Dave at Dean Park because he's just put in, uh, using risers and he said that the, the best one to, for um, locos to get up and down on is a 3% uh, I will not have, we be having steam going up, steam engines going up and down the helix, uh, helix sorry got helix brain, sorry going up and down on the risers because obviously they struggle the the steams to go up and down gradients uh, that's why I was going to do the heritage yard and then they just come on the loop and go around through the station and stuff like that um, so what what I was thinking of doing sorry I was wondering what my son was doing behind me then um, is that so then I can still have the board underneath um, and then where they meet, I'm hoping that they will be on the flat by then, is having uh, a couple of points, opposite points. So when the train comes around one way, it can go off on the points into like, like under here. So under here, have like a bit of storage, and under there, a bit of storage. Um, uh, for, for like a HST or something like that. Um, sorry, hands over my mouth, how rude. Um, but then also, where it goes round on that corner over there, um, have a point coming off just before it goes down the down the, um, the the gradient with the underneath, have a point coming off with a bit of track that goes off over into that corner. So where the raised section goes along, behind that, have, because it will all be covered, because the, the I'm going to have the cliff face coming all the way round, so it goes all the way round and and there, and then have that bit where the trains go off, and then have my idea that I was on about where I have the boards to put the locos on, and then I can just drive them on, take them off, and store them on shelves. Yeah. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, like that. So there's that idea. Um, let me know what you think of that. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it's a good idea because um, I really do want to have a second layer underneath so that I can have a, a train go off for quite a while. But I think, as, as everyone suggested, the Helix is a bit of a non starter, really. A um, bit ambitious by me. I mean, it could be done, but is it is it worth it? You know? Um, 
but yeah, so we've got the race section um, goes across the top of the cliffs and the waterfall uh, for my son to control the um, the risers going up and down to go to the, to a, a second level under the layout. Now my third and final point is the baseboards. Now uh, obviously I'm going to the show on Sunday. Um, if I can get a good deal on some track, I possibly will get some. I know people saying, you know, well you don't, you want to not worry about the track, worry about getting your boards sorted. Um, as I've said to, uh, I said to Jason, because I found a, a really old video of his from four years ago when he just laid his baseboards for his layout and there was no track on it. I'll tell you the difference it looked to what it is now is, you know, four years, he's done really, really well. Um, a lot better than what I'll probably do. But anyway, I've been trawling through YouTube, looking at different videos of people building baseboards. Um, and I don't know, I've come up with this idea. You see here, I've got these pillars here. I think someone did actually suggest in the comments to use the uh, roof joists. What I was thinking is get some battens, screw them to the joists, and then have them coming all the way along. I mean, obviously not there because I've got the drop bit, but sort of over here. Sort of if I move the camera over here, you've got um, hmm, possibly two there. Yeah, two. Um, see, it's so awkward because you know you can't move anything to do with the roofing. But yeah, you've got that one over there. But obviously, I'd use the wall anyway. Because um, there is, if you look here, sorry I'm panning a bit fast there, the camera's telling me off. This bit is attached to the wall and then the board is screwed into that there, mm, sort of along here. Um, but that's sort of, um, you know, there. So I'll probably still, I'll use that bit that's on the wall, that'll be the first one. And then the second one will be there and it'll come all the way along, uh, one second. Right, sorry about that again. Um, my son's now downstairs and I managed to grab a little biscuit so because I was a bit peckish. Right, um, yeah, and have the battens coming all the way along. And then what I was thinking is have a batten that like I've got going from there. And as you can see, that is bowing a bit. Um, going all the way along. All the way along. Obviously, I'd have to stop there. But these beams here, which are, under, oops, which are under here, take that off and then run a batten all the way to that beam over the back there and have one on the other side to support the, this bit. Obviously, I've started taking bits out. I took the top off of here. Sorry, I took the top bit off and everything just started wobbling about everywhere i mean i had the leg here I'll come down here see where the leg was there and then you had uh, that's the leg and i think i had sort of that bit was attached sort of there and i can't remember now and that bit was on there it sat on there like that but all this was all wobbling. So, yeah. And then as I say, I'll have a beam on that one there, coming along here. Um, but what I was thinking is then you have beams, like you have one here, going all the way along here, but you bring it, so it comes all the way along. Cause that's eight foot. And I can get beams that are 10 foot, so. And then you have one, there comes all the way along but the problem I've got I've got to stop it there because it drops and then it will then I'll have another one sort of here going along here but where they go crisscross uh sorry I'm just trying to get back. where they go crisscross sort of do they sort of do that don't they I'll notch them out so they sit flush and then glue, screw, so it's a tight thing. And then what I was thinking is, if I build that in my garden, 
um, hopefully I'll have a, a nice day without any rain, I mean it's not mad if it's too cold um, and then because there's not a lot of room up here to be cutting wood that length cut it all up, lay it all out in the garden, don't screw it together obviously because you'll never get it through uh, <laughs> you'll never get it through there that's like two foot by two foot I believe so you know um, but yeah and then sort of assemble it in the garden provisionally not put it actually permanent together um, and then bring it up and then assemble it like up here in the loft uh, but then put it together downstairs and then it, it, I can figure it all out I've got a plan, I've measured all the different things like I measured that, that's a two foot square gap there without the bridge bit and then it's sort of eight inches from the back there and I've done the measurements from the back of the board to that beam and then from that beam to the front of the board um, you know that's four foot over there to that corner so um, but what I need to know is what oh, one minute please sorry my son again <laughs> um, you gotta love him really well um, there would be no Charlie Brook without him I suppose um, one because you know his name being Charlie he, you wouldn't have Charlie Brook until you know part, part of this is for him you know um, so you can have uh, father son time doing the layout um, so but anyway um, let me know what you think about that uh, what was I going to say oh yes I need to know one with the battens and I know people probably use different sizes but what is the best size for it now hold on one moment I think it was this one just give me two seconds get me a trusty tape measure out yes this one here I put it there, that, excuse that, but um, it's 44 by 44 um, millimetres. I know people, some people don't work in millimetres, but yes, so it's 44 by 44. Is that the best one to use to do battening with, or is there, um, is there a better size? I mean, I know I've seen like where it's thinner one way but thicker sort of like I suppose like that um, in my eyes I think that's a bit too thin and a bit too thick if you know what I mean I mean that's I think you'll find um, yeah that's 44 I think I hate tape measures sometimes um, yeah that's 44 as well so yeah let me know what 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 you guys use and um, the consensus will be, oh, you know, uh, I'll use what the majority. I'll take the majority. Um, also, what thickness? If I was to renew the boards, which I think I'm going to have to do, I might try and get away with putting these back on um, because I think if I get the battens right, it might be all right to use these boards. But I think it was uh, Jason said that there's so many different small sections. Um, you really need it sort of like this bit should be like it's two foot across there because two foot is obviously the maximum I'm going to be able to go with because of getting it through the loft hatch but then I could just get a whole long length of six foot that way um, yeah uh, I know I'm sad that's my my last update video I was just checking something out I'll explain in a minute but then obviously you'd have like this bit here would be another bit uh, and then that bit there would be one bit and then you'd have to cut out the corner and then that bit there would probably have to be one bit so yeah um, but yeah with the baseballs if I was to sorry um, if I was to get new hold on I'm just trying to sort this little camera out there you go if I was to get new so I've got a little IA symbol up here and it's right in my face and I keep I'm conscious of it because but obviously it doesn't show on the video sorry uh, yeah back to the baseboards stop digressing if I had did get new baseboards what would be I mean obviously I know it applies the best best to use because as I say chipboard like this is starting to go a bit 
chipping, chip pulled. Um, but ply I know a lot of people use, but what, what thickness would you suggest to use? Um, or to, to, you know, if I was to replace the baseboards. Um, my notes didn't really work, did they? Because I'm still like digressing off onto other things and erming and ahhing. But anyway, I tried. Yeah, see, there, there's my little notes there. You know, what I wanted to do. Um, right, and then just one last thing. I promise this will be the last thing as I look about, thinking about it. I mean, obviously, just quickly, the lower board I'd have to do as well with the battening. The same way I'd have the battening going from the beams. But obviously, it wouldn't need so much because I'm, it's not got to cover a bigger, as bigger area. Um, but um, another thing I'm going to try is uh, Matthew Stamp commented and said about um, get some string and drawing pins and use the string to show us your track plan. Um, now that I think is a brilliant idea. Um, I might use nails instead of drawing pins because I might do it if I'm going to replace the balls I might do it on this, this board as it is now, before I take it apart. Sorry, that's my phone. It's the wife, I think. Um, oh, she's asked if I want saveloin chips for dinner. Sorry. Um, I have to reply in a minute, because otherwise I won't get saveloin chips. Um, yeah, so I'll do it on these boards, so I might have to put that corner back on, and then I can do the string, and then perhaps I can show you how it is, and also, because I believe, is it the 3% gradient foam foam risers need 12 foot to drop down from four and a half inches which that's oh i know i said I, that would be the last one but it's just just jogged my memory four and a half inches is that enough of a drop do you reckon to give you enough room to run uh locos underneath the board <laughs> i'm not too worried about i mean the access isn't a big problem because obviously there's gonna be no scenery but um, you know, if I get a derailment, I'm trying to. I'm going to try and keep the track as close to that middle cutout section as possible, so I can just go under and do get any trains out that might derail or such like. But yeah, so let me know. As I say again, sorry and thank you to Michael for providing me with, with these these lovely, lovely little uh, templates. They are, you know, they were a godsend because I was thinking, how am I going to do that? Um, and thank you to everyone that commented on my last video I mean I had oh, I'll tell you it was going mad um, uh, I will message you by the way Matthew um, I'll probably message you on, on YouTube because uh, not being funny this goes for all my subscribers I'd like to keep sort of I know you said about Facebook but I like to keep maybe my Facebook I know I've used my Facebook to advertise Five Elms live streams and my Twitter, but um, I'd rather keep because otherwise it gets confusing. If you suddenly get a message from someone on Facebook, you might think, "Oh, who's that?" I know it'll probably come up with your name, Matthew. But I'll, I'll message you on, on on YouTube on the message thing on YouTube, um, unless you've messaged me because obviously I use my, the app on my phone and iPad, and it doesn't show messages, which. YouTube, if you're listening, <laughs> would be nice if we could view our messages through the app. Um, unless I'm doing something wrong with the app, and you can. Um, but I will message you, Matthew. As I say, I've just got a few things going on. As I say, this weekend I'm really, really busy. We're going to see Santa tomorrow with the kids. Um, and obviously I've got my train fare on Sunday. So it probably won't be this weekend. So I'm going to get this video up. I might do it tonight while I'm uploading this video, Matthew. So... But, okay, sorry, I'm going on there. I was, I was hoping to just have a short five, four or five minute video, but I think this has turned into something like another half an hour probably, but I'll edit it down. I'll try and get it as short as possible. I do ramble on. I might cut a few of these bits out. I don't know. Um, but thank you for watching. Uh, sorry about my son. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll, um, I can get you know some of these ideas sorted out uh let me know what you think and um thank you for all your comments and your support and i'm gonna go and order my saveloin chips now thank you have a lovely evening goodbye don't forget share subscribe like 
okay? And, you know, comment would be great. Thanks. Bye.